All right, I got the recording going. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I don't know if it's just me, but I still don't feel like school's back in session. And today we've got, I believe, just four presentations to get through, which means, yeah, the following days we're going to be a little more um, pressed for time, but they will be pretty smooth. We've got some workshop announcements as usual, reminders, and then all that before we get into those presentations. So stick with us for a bit, and then we invite everyone to stay for presentations and uh, help us in reviewing them with submitting that form. Next slide. So on December 9th, we have two workshops. I believe these are the very last two of the semester. Uh, please someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. We've got a deep dive into telescopes architecture and JSON web tokens. Note that the JSON web tokens one, I believe, has changed its state from tomorrow to the 9th. So we have the telescope workshop at 2 p.m. and JSON web tokens at 5 p.m. And more info will be posted on the Discord server as uh, we get closer to that. And of course, due for this week is attendance, which will be at the end of today's meeting for the presentations, I believe, and a status update, which of course uh, opens up on Friday. Take it away, Professor. All right, so um, one of the things I've been, I spent this weekend catching up on a bunch of stuff. And one of the things I caught up on were my recommendations. And as part of that, I went into Arcos.io and I found out that some of you are not on Arcos. So make sure you're on Arcos.io. We're working on an alternate way of, of getting your information. Um, but right now, this is the best we have. And I need to see this stuff when you guys ask me to, uh, to go back over. Uh, oops, where am I? Um, come on. Why is this not opening up? There we go. I need you guys to have this on here so that when you come in, and ask me to give you a recommendation and you say you worked on a certain project, I can go back in and, and dig up both you and the project. So if you're not a member of Arcos, sign up here. The link is on the slide. If you are a member of Arcos and you, uh, if you are a member of Arcos and you forgot to mark yourself as active, the next page, the next page down is here, and you can mark yourself active. And you should also put yourself on your project, but I think you do that on the project page. Okay, so this little checkbox says whether you're active or not in the semester. Um, I use this. I use the other one to, to kind of track you guys and, and make sure that I, I can remember, you know, my memory is only as good as, as my fingers can type. So we need to, we need to get you guys on here. Um, so that's for you personally. And then... There is um, your projects, right? You just click up here and you add your projects on, right? Put yourself on. Um, you know, make sure you mark your project as active. Put in all your links. And all of this allows me, when you guys then ask me in a couple of years or in a couple of weeks, to go in and... Uh, give you a, a recommendation, I can actually do it. Um, so, you know, please make sure you do this. It really is important. It's important for me. Um, I, I really like being able to write decent recommendations. And if I can't go back and look stuff up, I can't give you a decent recommendation. I can't, you know, it's just impossible to, to find stuff if it's not uh, linked where we can find, you know, if, if, we, if it's not linked where we can find it, it's impossible to find it. So please make sure you go in and, and do all that. Um, it's not going to take you long. It's not going to take you a lot of work. Uh, but just make sure that you've got all of these in there so that I can actually go in. One, it, it keeps a record. We count them. Um, I report them, you know, how many projects we had, how many students we had working. Uh, but two, specifically for you, this is my record for recommendations. So when you ask me to do a recommendation, I'm going to ask you for your Arcos projects, and then I'm going to go to the Arcos project, and I'm going to look you up. Um, so you know, please make sure. Presentations are going to start momentarily. Today we have four, down from six because we realized that we had duplicates 
Uh, on our second day, we already duplicated two of the, the projects that had presented. But we have MarketBot, Used Car Playground, Civity, and SMAB. Um, you are invited to evaluate and attend if you want to work in your small groups and, and uh, develop your presentation for yourselves. You know, please feel free to go and do that. Um, if you do present with us, there's a form you can fill out. It's on this slide. It's on all of the slides. Um, let's, uh, we'll, we'll paste that into the, we'll paste that into the chat. Um, maybe Frank can paste it in while I'm working, while I'm doing this. Um, gotcha. but we'll, yeah, thanks Frank, uh, or, or Steven, whomever, but yeah. Um, that's for anybody who wants to help us evaluate. We encourage everybody to watch as many of these as you can and to help us evaluate because, well, one, we got some really cool projects and two, that way, if I'm having a bad day, we don't penalize everybody quite so much. Friday, we start our main, you know, we, so far in two days, we've only gone over eight. Um, Friday, we're going to have 10. We're going to break up into two groups on Friday. Uh, we will give you more details on Friday today. I think we'll just go through the four in my webpage. We're not going to worry about it too much. Um, but if you are on this side of the uh, presentation, Hotbox, Poll Buddy, Smart Rider, Housing Finder, Use Cloud FS, Padlock News, Spiral Stats, Tempo Chur, uh, Personal Website Template, and Lavender Programming Language, please plan to go Friday. I just realized uh, during our, our, our Meet Your, your Advisors, or Meet Your Professors uh, meetings that Tempo Chur, that first part re uh, actually refers to a tempo. So boom, 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 boom. So very clever. Um, so we will see you all on Friday. Here's the rubric for the presentations. I've been presenting them a couple of weeks. You should have them by now. Um, if you're developing your presentation, you know, please follow them. Um, otherwise, uh, if you're evaluating, please evaluate based on them as well. Uh, excellent to needs work or not addressed. All right. And I think that's all I had. Frank, did you have anything else? Olivia, um, Stephen? Nothing else for me besides uh, remember that there's a resources channel on uh -huh. the server for links to you know, everything presentation related. Okay, so awesome. Um, attendance for today, if you are doing attendance remotely or if you're doing attend attendance offline, you have, to re you have to watch the video on Submitty or on a venue until this point. Um, so this is eight minutes in. Uh, after you watch eight minutes, you will be accounted as as uh, being here. Um, we also have this the uh, what do you call it? Submitty and the pop up, neither of which actually show. Give me a second. There's the pop-up, and uh, let's do submitty. There we go. Um, so there's the uh, there's our phrase. The phrase is last push. That's to encourage you to get your last pushes in, get your last commits in. Um, push hard. We only have 16 days. Well, no, we have less than that. We only have like uh, 10 days till the end of the semester. So please, you know, get your stuff in. Make it easy for us. We like seeing lots and lots of contributions uh, of amazing uh, extent and clarity. So please get this all done. And again, if you're watching this on venue, you have to watch eight minutes and then you should be, then you should be good. I'm going to encourage everybody, though, to stick around and see the rest of these. Um, do we have any questions? Otherwise, we'll start. Uh, with our presentations, right, Frank? I think that's the next thing. Steve? Yes. I think Frank and Steven are both here. I can confirm I am at least. Yeah. Steven's so far down in the alphabet. He should change his name. Oh, yeah, he's here. He's in the chat. It should be AA Steven. Ah, uh, Steven. <laughs> or dot Steven. Dot Steven. There we go. Then, then I'd be able to find him fast, too. Hi, dot Steven. All right. We will continue to, to record. Please get your uh, um, 
your uh, uh, attendance in. And then if you want, you can drop off. Otherwise, we will begin presentations with uh, in just, I don't know, two minutes. And I think we'll probably start off with, uh, was it MakerBot? Bot. Yeah, MarketBot. MarketBot. MakerBot sounded cool. That would be a good one, too. Me, Professor Turner? Yes. Um, so for MarketBot, do you guys want to, do you want to present live yourselves or you want me to present for you? Um, I didn't know that was an option, like as in. There are all sorts of options. Oh, do you mean like are you, you'll show the screen, the slideshow on your screen? If, if you have this, I'll yeah, over it. If you have the slideshow posted, I can do that. Uh, otherwise, you can present your, you know, you can, you can be the presenter and I will tape the, uh, the, uh, um. You can do it on your screen. I'm fine okay. with that. All right. Um, so let's put these away. If anybody else needs them, let us know. Um, presentations are starting. Um, this should be last push. Should be the, the special keyword if you need it. I just typed that into the chat. Uh, going, going, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Um, that's gone. That's gone. Um, that's gone. Let me see if I can bring up your presentation. Or you guys can learn CS1. Either way, it works for me. Okay. This is you. You guys can see that, right? Yep. Okay, just give me the beep whenever whenever you want to get going. I'll probably type something in about... Um, we'll plan in about 10 minutes. I'll type something in with five of us. Uh, it's it's, it's just me presenting, so I, I don't think it'll take 10 minutes. Okay. Um, well, without further ado, um, my project is MarketBot. My partner, or my team is not here because they take the course for zero credits um, and they couldn't be here right now. But, um, yeah, so I'll tell you what MarketBot's about. Um, can we move to the next slide? So what is MarketBot? Basically, right now, um, it's a remote brokerage account that is controlled through Discord. Um, our future plans are to implement custom trading strategies that you can kick off through Discord and um, basically like maintain all through Discord without having to like write any code. This is the second semester working on this. We laid the groundwork last semester and this semester we actually um, didn't get into core functionality as or as much core functionality as we wanted to because of a gigantic code refactor that we decided to do. This is the next slide. So our tech stack uh, uses Alpaca for the programmatic brokerage. So this allows us to execute trades, um, get like market information and ticker information through API calls. We use Discord, as I said, as the actual bot that you communicate with. Um, Polygon is our data source, but we haven't really gotten to use that yet as we didn't, as I said, we didn't get to core implementation yet. So we haven't actually worked on like processing data and uh, getting outputs from that. And lastly, Python is our main, um, is, we literally use Python for everything so far and we haven't had a reason to switch off of it so uh, that's why that's the only language there uh, we can move to the next slide um, so some sample features are here uh, as you can see we so these positions were produced by um, an example like a small test script that we wrote to execute a bunch of trades 
um, on our paper trading account. But as you can see, we implemented these things that out or these graphs that can output through Discord, which I thought was really neat. And you can monitor like portfolio performance via Discord, which will come in handy when we actually get our strategies up and running. And go to the next. So some future plans, since we didn't get to um, do as much as we wanted to this semester, seeing as it's only me taking this course for credit, and then the other two are taking it for zero credits. So they don't really have any obligation to work on this or uh, much time, honestly. So most of the work done on this is just through one person. But future plans include um, custom strategy framework. So we want to make a way for new developers to hop on this and be able to create their own strategy with somewhat ease. Um, we also want to write something that will help new developers as well and ourselves to backtest these strategies. So this kind of goes in hand with the strategy framework in that we're trying to uh, test out strategies and give a nice, easy way to do so. Um, autonomous functionality, we want this bot to be able to run all day, every day, and monitor our portfolios. So that would obviously be a gigantic um, plus, but obviously it's not so easy to implement so far as you have to develop a custom entrance strategy and exit strategy, uh, which is very difficult to make profitable. Though obviously profitability doesn't go or doesn't require or autonomous functionality does not require profitability. Uh, we also want to add documentation. Uh, most of the code is kind of, I wouldn't say like we have a standardized documentation format. So I would say future plans, we want to standardize that and make sure all the team members know exactly how we should be commenting our code. Uh, additionally, the walkthrough and the installation guide, that is pretty straightforward. We want new developers to be able to pick it up and be able to work on this project um, like without too much hassle. And monitor, monitoring strategy performance kind of goes um, hand in hand with the features I showed before, but perhaps maybe something, we were thinking something along the lines of a notification system that sends messages through Discord when some certain metric gets hit. Uh, we can move to the next slide. So I thought this code snippet that I screenshotted would be uh, more clear, but it's really low quality, so you can't really read anything. But in there, um, that is a big chunk of our Discord parse, message parser. And originally, we had a bunch of nested if statements, which was truly disgusting. So we ended up um, right, separating all of the functionality in the parser and making its own class to handle Discord parsing without having to keep nesting and adding more if statements to handle different inputs. So that's referring to the generalized parsing solution. Uh, I worked on this with Inwan, or my teammate, but as I said, he's taking this for zero credit, so I didn't see a point in um, including him on this. Um, additionally, so separation of classes, that also goes along with that, but we also um, extracted all the functions to their own classes and all the possible calls to the Discord bot to its own class. So it's much neater that we now that we have um, like basic like modules for each function of this bot. Uh, for the market entrance contribution, so I found this repository that takes um, like earnings reports from each quarter or from the most recent quarter and 
uh, evaluates the quote value of a bunch of stocks and spits out the stocks in order of which ones are the highest value or most undervalued, aka like good picks to go in on. So I got that running. Um, that required some Javis. That required running some jQuery through uh, a local web server. It was kind of difficult. And I also wrote a basic allocation strategy to get into the market, which is what you saw in the um, example features page, where you could see that we had a bunch of positions in all these different stocks. That was obviously just for testing. Uh, and my last contribution was being the project manager. And although I said like we didn't have other members for credit, um, I still was in contact with uh, Inwan most of the time, and we were discussing. We would, I would be the one that would um, divvy up the tasks and basically um, give him tasks on what to do for the next week, whenever or whenever he could achieve it. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, any questions? Anybody have a question? So you you mentioned so so the things you're talking about that's that's essentially the refactoring you were talking about, um, kind of breaking out classes and things like that. Yeah, and that took a large portion of time because of how we had it previously structured. It was just like very messy. Um, very like non-scale. It wasn't a very scalable solution. Yeah, and, and that's a good reason to do a, to do a, a re, uh, reconfiguration or a, you know a refactoring. Um, so in in one, you guys have worked on this like so the the code you refactor was, were from the spring or summer semester, right? Uh, parts of it were, and parts of it were new. Some code we added at the start of this this semester, and then decided that we like had to refactor it. Otherwise, we would end up with a very um, gross code base. Cool. So, how what have you? Uh, so, as a, as a program manager or project leader, however we phrase this, um, working with people who aren't really required uh, to, to to contribute in, in a timely fashion, which which by the way is is a lot of open source software. Um, did you learn anything uh, particular about that, or any uh, any any? Uh, uh, items of wisdom you can pass down to to us. Yeah, so I learned that early on. I was expecting them to be more involved, but then I realized that you couldn't really count on um, count on these members that have no obligation to do what I say, like when I want it by. So I figured like I'd pass um, as I moved into the semester. I started like passing them tasks that weren't like truly essential to what I wanted to do so that they could finish it on their own time and get back to me whenever they, they were ready. Cool. Um, yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we recommend, you know, so highly things like the issue trackers where you can bring up, where you can break out, uh, you know, for a small team like you had that that's, you know, what, what you did is worked perfectly well, but that's one, one reason why a lot of, a lot of places will have these issue trackers with, you know, with things kind of managed, um, things that are ready to be done, you know, small things that are independent uh, is just to, to, to allow people to work in this kind of, dis, you know, just uh, asynchronous environment where their priorities are not the same as your priorities. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Any more questions for, uh, for Mark? All right. Um, well, thank you, Mark. It was, well, thanks for having me, Professor Turner. Cool. Um, you know, please fill out your recommendations and uh, let me get out of this one. Take next care. is who do we have next? Let me go back Used to car playground. You use car playground. Use car playground. Are you there? I think Joy was here, right? Hello. Uh, can you hear me? I'm Jingy. All right. Can I do the presentation on my side? You can. Let me. Uh, All right. Let me stop sharing my stuff. Well, stop my stuff. And then I can right. record my video from before.
before you get started, just let me make sure that I'm recording correctly. Okay, now pr present. Ready, All right, set, I'm go present. Present. You're not presenting. Oh, okay. Are you there? Hello. Uh, I think yeah. I just froze. You just froze. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I go the uh, presentation now, or? You should be able to. Can't you? Can't you present? All right. Cool. I'm gonna share my screen. Can you guys? Sh can you guys see it? Yep. Yep. All right. <laughs> so uh, our group is used car data playground. And uh, since uh, all of my uh, teammates, like most of them are in China right now, so we're having different time zones. So uh, I am the person that's going to do the uh, presentation today. So to introduce our teammate a little bit, there are uh, six people in our team. And then the team leader is Hong Yu. So he is basically doing the uh, scrapper and web applications. Uh, I am Jing Yi, and uh, I'm doing map design and local design. And Jing Yu Wang and Si Tong Liu is both doing front and back, back design. And uh, Song Xu is build uh, the models to predict the car price. And Yi Fei is mostly doing like uh, data scrapping. <clears throat> so to get you guys a little bit understanding on what we did this semester. So we're doing uh, web applications that mostly using graphic um, to let people understanding the economics behind the used car mar market. So there's are three there are three scenario you might think of when using the web applications. The first one is the scenario of uh, where to buy the cheaper used car, and then uh, something like uh, the this depreciation of the model, and then uh, where I can what model of the list have the list used cost. So um, a little bit of the tag overview for the scrapper we are using the scrappy. And for the data analysis, we're using mostly Pandas, SKLearns, and NumPy. So as, uh, Pandas is a tool to the data analysis, and SKLearn is mostly features with uh, various uh, classifications, uh, regression, and clustering algorithm. So for the uh, visualization, we're using GeoPandas and uh, Matplot library. So the Matplot library is just drawing basic mass plot and the geo pandas are uh, mostly for uh, drawing the uh, the maps uh, the US maps so most of our work are done on uh, Jupyter notebook um, because it's like easier to use and everything like the output is going to be uh, saved on the uh, website so that's why we choose to use the Jupyter notebook and then for the web server, we are currently using Flask because it's lightweighted and it's because all of our code is mostly Python. So it's easier to just connect together. And um, yeah. Um, so a little bit of how we did. Um, so there are two servers on, uh, on our project. The first one is the Scrappy and then the Flask. So on the first server, we basically we, uh, scrap all the data from the uh, internet. And then we save every uh, we save all the data to the second server, and then we save it in the MongoDB. And then from the MongoDB, we create the, uh, the Flask, uh, the, the applications, the web applications back to the first server. So that in this way, everything is saved and copied and it's also easier to use. And to believe or not, is actually uh, faster than before. So um, to talk about uh, the semester progress, um, so we moved everything to the cloud server um, because like normal, like before, we are just having everything stored in another file. But in this semester, we moved everything to the cloud server so that it's easier to access and it, it is also copied. And then uh, the sec second thing is also we change the, uh, the algorithm of the uh, scrapper itself so that right now it is actually high accuracy of scrapping all the data from, uh, from the internet. 
so that to make sure like everything is going all right and then we don't make any mistake from it. And then the second, the third thing is that we also tried a lot of things of the uh, visualizations and we figured out the uh, the good ones are D3, JS and lab. And then uh, just like I mentioned before, we're using, uh, we're creating a web applications using Flask and uh, we are also moving all the data from saving the J saving, saving to the JSON file to the MongoDB. And finally, we have a logo. And uh, maybe you guys may remember from the last semester, we uh, at the end of the, uh, the year, we have a presentation saying what's the goal for this semester. And now um, we are showing this page again to show you guys we are, what we are accomplishment. Uh, so the first we accomplish a more, uh, we scrap the more data. And then the second is we move everything to the cloud server. And then the, thir the third thing is we research more econometrics. And then uh, the fourth one is also we transfer to the Flask. And uh, so just uh, so that you guys can know, I put the ripple here. So if you want more stuff and uh, um, you want to see everything more detailedly, go check it out. So since this is a team project, so um, I'm going to show you guys like how we worked during a group. So we do have a issue tracker because we're in a different timeline, sometimes it's just really hard to uh, make up a, a team meeting because like, um, of course, when, when we are working at USA, uh, most of our teammates are still like sleeping in China. So uh, we are having a issue tracker and uh, everything is having having here so that everything can, uh, everybody can see what is going on and what, what they should do. And then if you're gonna go check the MongoDB, uh, this is the uh, data stored in MongoDB. Uh, there's seven category categories in the uh, MongoDB. And uh, um, so it's like really important and it's also easy to access because it's just really clear to see. And this is the output map you're gonna get from the uh, web applications. So you can get a, either a price map, a normalized price map act actually, and then or a quality, uh, a quantity map. And also we can do an inverse supply curve, and uh, it's just to help me uh, understand like uh, for last call uh, for last quantity there is going to be having a higher price. And we also use the uh, uh, machine learning method to calculate the uh, price. Uh, which is right here. So the price is having a, like a like a relationship with the quality. And then uh, just to specify, uh, you can also even draw a box plot for a, a specific uh, type. So this is an example for the price of uh, BMW so series. And then by looking at the box plot, you can figure out some uh, something. Uh, I write like we write. Uh, Two features right here, which is uh, the two, two, uh, 2015 and 2017 are having uh, outliers, and also the mean is directly proportional to the years. So what I'm trying to say here is that from looking at different plot, you can really know a lot about the market and what is behind it. So you can really learn a lot, but just by just looking at it. So there's another progress we did is for this year, we're collecting 2023 unique car models, which is like a thousand more than last year. So which is like a really big pro progress. And this is a graph displayed on the website too. It's average price by the uh, car makes. It's just uh, pretty cool to see, right? <laughs> and there's another display of when you're trying to use the web applications. So let's say if you're searching for a specific type, uh, so I'm typing 2017 BMW here, then uh, you're going to get something like this. You're going to get the year, the mix, and the model, and then you choose uh, which, which one you like to see. Uh, so here I'm choosing three models. Uh, it's those like three blue ones. So if you're, you're going to choose th those three ones and then you uh, run it, then you're going to have a graph plotting like this. If you're going to select different ones, then you're going to uh, get a different graph, of course. 
So also just to mention, we also um, discover a little bit between different machine learning models. And then we figure out the random forest regression is having the list our MSE scores and the highest regression scores. So which is like uh, good to use in this project. So most of our, most of our project is using uh, random forest regression to uh, predict the price. And then uh, we also have a future plan is to expand the coverage of our database because right now we're having just the New York City, but we have a bigger goal, right? We want the whole US, US um, graph. Yeah, and then the second thing is uh, we think we can do more detailed chart for uh, the users to see. Um, and then the third is, of course, because it's a web applications, so uh, we want to optimize the loading speed. And I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys, and I'm going to wrap up here. All right, any questions? All right, so I have a couple. Um, so one of the things that uh, that he disappeared. Um, one of the things uh, that <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, one of the things that that you you were working on was you were, you were using a, a, a Jupiter Jupiter uh, file. Yes. Are you guys? Are you all working on different aspects of your website and things, or are you all working in the same Jupyter file? And, and how are you coordinating that? Uh, we're working on different uh, Jupyter files, but we're combining everything into the uh, Ripple so that uh, Hong Yu can, com can come peek uh, whatever he wants and then combine everything together. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so basic, are you, are you modifying the same file? In your own repository, or, or you have multiple Jupyter um, files that are being included in the in the main. Yeah, we we have multiple ones. Okay, so that's a good way to divide up the, the effort so that you're not a you're not running into a bottleneck. Um, yeah. So, how, did you get together at all during the semester, or did you only use issue tracking? Um, we do have a couple of team meetings together. Um. Yeah, but like personally, like we are not like face to face though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite part of working on this so far? Since you're the only one presenting today, you can oh. you, you can you can you know needle everybody else for not being here. <laughs> well, I'm actually I'm really enjoying it. It's because like everybody's working is like we are all friends. Mm -hmm. We're just like friends when we're in school, so it's like pretty cool to work work uh, the whole progress. Um, together and then uh, yeah and also I'm learning a lot in, into it because I never know like website um, things before but uh, after doing this project I'm knowing more from the uh, from others cool all right uh, anybody else have questions no all right uh, thank you it was it was nicely done and uh, you know if, if uh, your group wants to get together to talk about it later that's fine otherwise um, hi you guys professor are good. yeah turner yeah hello is there another question or sorry oh i think i think i think she's my and she's just froze like a, oh. she's having like a internet problem or something like that well, that's fine. Um, we will see. Good job. Let's uh, let's get the next one up. Who is that? Oh, hi, Professor Turner. I, I was lacking. I'm Joy. Uh, I just want to do some add up on the question you mentioned about the Ju Jupyter notebook. Sure. Oh uh, yes. So so um, honestly, like uh, me working in the project, I didn't actually use the the Jupyter notebook. I just used like uh, editing the the file, the Python file, and um, HTML and whatever that um, JavaScript is. Um, so uh, we are using like um, the GitHub repo and and local within branches to to work on each other's part because uh, working on the uh, front end web app. Um, it it wasn't only like uh, one person's um, 
job within within um, separate different parts. So that that's just my add up mm -hmm. to the question. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. No, thanks yeah. for uh, thanks for jumping in. <laughs> Um, oh, I, I'm sorry. I was I was really lacking, so I I probably didn't catch up everything. You did you did uh did fine. Um, I I know that this is a little challenging sometimes. Um, we're uh in too many continents. I don't think we have anybody in in, in Antarctica, but I think we cover most of the rest of them. Um, so okay, thank you. No problem. Thanks a lot. Um, I think the next group we have is. Unless there's other questions, I am going to open it up for our next contestants. Samiti, Samiti, are you here? Yeah, we're here. How do you want to do this? Um, I can screen share too. Okay, I will turn myself off and uh, and start grabbing that screen. Give me just a second here to. Wait, mom, thanks. Okay. Oh, Sorry, my mom. No. She's, she's, she's welcome to watch. <laughs> it's okay. okay, so we're presenting for Sumiti, and it's an open source programming assignment submission system, but I'm sure if you're in Arcos, you already know that. So I'm Stephanie, and I think the other team members could also introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Janae. I'm Alice. I'm Jonathan. I'm Javier. Uh, and I'm Vikram. Okay, so like I said before, Sumiti is a programming assignment submission system, and it has features like custom customizable automated grading and TA manual grading for both homework assignments and for tests. And um, we have, oh, and Okay, so with the switch to remote learning, we have an online office hours queue as well as polling to replace eye clickers. And we also have notebook gradables to help with online exam taking. And then we also have discussion forums and plagiarism detection and more features. And for project organization, our tech stack includes PHP, SQL, Twig, Python, C++, Travis, and GitHub. But this semester we ran into some issues with Travis, but um, Shell's been helping us switch to use GitHub Actions. And for onboarding, we tried to make Submitty friendly for new team members because we have um, like a good first issue labels for our GitHub, for like our GitHub list of issues. And we also have like bi-weekly stand-ups so then people can talk about what they worked on and um, new team members can also ask questions. And if you're looking to get involved, you can always check out submitty.org where we have instructions for installing Submitty locally and a how to contribute section. So yeah, we can move on to people talking about their individual contributions. Yeah, so um, I've been working on the forum over the summer, uh, one of the Google Summer of Code in, uh, code participants was working on making the full page forum, but he left before he was able to finish. So I helped to complete that PR and go through all the bug testing, which involved fixing end to end tests for the forum. So because of the new display, we had to change some links and things. And um, I'm currently working on adding expiration dates for announcements. And this is going to involve refactoring the database because in the past we've made some changes and we haven't really updated the database to reflect these new variable names. And going in to create this expiration date for announcements is a good way for us to go back and refactor the database to make sure that it lines up with the new variables. Also, in addition to all of this, I've updated the documentation for end-to-end -end tests to add new things that we needed to include, as well as I'm working on at updating the forum documentation. Howdy. Um, so I didn't do quite as much as I would have otherwise liked this semester. So I mostly did tests. Um, um, the first thing I did was I found some bugs and reported some issues in the PDF editor. Um, 
and elsewhere, there were a few very small issues that I reported. Um, I tested the Q interface that Vikram wrote that he'll probably tell you about later. Um, ended up working pretty well. Um, and I also was able to replicate and find some possible bugs in uh, the instruction module for the section manager. Um, yeah. So um, I added a alert before um, a gradable page, mainly for time gradable confirmation so that you don't like accidentally start the timer. Um, I added a new auto grading release option for instructors for choosing what sort of information they want to reveal when um, they want to release like a hidden test case. So that was already there, but I added an additional option to be able to give them more like additional like options for what they want to release. Um, I added a non-TA gradable manual release bug fix. So on the um, front page when um, when the instructor released an assignment, um, there was an issue with non-TA gradables. And I made a variety of bug fixes and quality of life changes on the TA grading page. So this semester, I worked on the team edit history instructor UI. So if you look at the bottom left and bottom right pictures, it just shows when um, a team has edits past the team lock date, then it will have like this lock icon for the grade details page and it will like the edits that were made after the lock date would be highlighted in red. And then I also made some polling UI improvements. So on the top, top left, you could see that um, you're no longer allowed to submit a form that is invalid for adding a poll or editing a poll because before if you did that then it just like made the instructor lose all their progress and on the top right i i don't know if you can see that okay yeah, on the top right you can see that it i changed um the instructor ui to use check marks instead of a three-way toggle button in order to change polling states and I'm currently working on integrating WebSockets into polling, as well as adding a timer for the Office Hours Q pause button. Hey guys, so this semester I was working on the TA grading page. There was a few improvements there. So one of them you can see on the right, which is specific stats for each grader. So it breaks down each grader and what components they have graded. So it counts how, how many um, com components for each user they graded, the average and the standard deviation. So it gives uh, the graders a bit of an idea of how each user, well, each grader is grading and how strict they are and stuff like that. Um, I also worked on a TA page um, refactor. Well, I didn't show that because that's boring to show, but um, I also worked on the course materials page. So previously when sorting some course materials, um, it would automatically sort by um, like alphabetical order and then file type. So a file would be ranked before folder, but now there's a bit more leeway or freedom in how you want to uh, sort your course materials. And this is for instructors, of course. And another thing that's still a work in progress is some gradable configuration to have instructors have a bit more freedom in how they want to present their gradable. So let's say they want a, an infinite state gradable that's always open and, and continuous um, uploads. So, and last thing was some minor bug fixes here and there, so. My, so my major work this semester was working on the Office Hours Q UI. So I made some changes to that. Uh, in the top, the top left one, the more like colorful picture, that is the old uh, Q settings page uh, total. So now when you can see the big problem with this and like major complaints were that it was pretty hard to tell whether a certain queue is open or closed just like on a quick glance uh, due to the fact that the open and close buttons look very similar and the kind of all the colors made it a bit confusing. So I changed that so that instead uh, the buttons, instead of them toggling, uh, instead of them being like toggle buttons, they're just check boxes. So now it's much easier to tell whether a uh, certain queue is open or closed. And in addition, I removed the, the filters. And as you can see on the, the bottom picture, the I put the filter buttons 
right there in the main page. So if you're a mentor or a TA, you've definitely seen this before in office hours, where now instead you just uh, select the buttons that are filled in, shows the queues that in which students, uh, the students in those queues are visible, and then the ones that are kind of cleared out, you can see section two, those students you won't see in the list of all students. So in addition to this, I uh, fix some end-to-end -end tests uh because you were kind of adding uh like changing some things around and i updated the documentation for the office hours queue on the submitty.org website i also worked on some minor queue changes slash bug fixes and i also worked on polling so what i did was uh i modified how some requests were being handled uh in regards to polling for example if you want to view a view a specific poll or answer answer a poll uh, now you can uh, kind of put in the specific poll you want right into the URL it's much easier to do that uh, and before you have to kind of put in a more obscure URL and I'm also currently working on displaying the total number of responses per poll right on the main polling website uh, main polls page because now it's just easier so you can see how many students have answered a specific poll without having to go and view the results. So we just wanted to finish off with saying thank you to Professor Cutler because she puts a lot of time and effort into managing the Civility Development Team, especially over the summer when there's Google Summer of Code. And yeah, that's the end of our presentation. So if you have any questions. So first, I believe that says questions. <laughs> My bad, I didn't. I didn't honor Eli in that way. <laughs> <laughs> we have any questions? This is your chance to grill the submitty team. So, the thing that I like best is we had two or three of you mentioning end-to-end uh, -end testing and uh, and uh, uh, finding and and uh, fixing bugs. So. Do you guys want to comment on, on kind of your workflow on that? Or, or how did you decide when tests were good enough? Do you, do you have any idea what your coverage is? I think someone else could take that question. I personally don't write too okay. many end-to-end -end tests. I know when it came to the forum, uh, all of the end-to-end -end tests that we had were like very hard-coded for the old forum. And now that we had redesigned for the full page forum, we had to go in and make sure that it would pass these end to end tests. So was it, was it a visual coding or was it, you know, you know, what, what are you, how are you actually running the tests? Are you, are you comparing screenshots uh, to screenshots or is it something else? Uh, it's comparing like where things are on the page. Like it, for parts of it, it's looking if it has the breadcrumbs in the proper if it has breadcrumbs to pass locations, what the path is to what the path is, things like that. Cool. I um, ended up. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to follow up on that. If you're, I'd, I'd prefer to just have you answer. <laughs> okay, cool stuff. Um, yeah, I really just ended up going into the. Um, because we have this gigantic like testing module, I would go in and basically open up a whole bunch of different browsers and a whole bunch of different tabs and just try my very hardest to break whatever I was working on. Um, it that it was very fun. Uh, that's great because uh, that's that's actually a, uh, a very valuable service. Um, finding errors before they cause problems you know, saves a lot of it, a lot of issues. If you can fix an, a bug on your own time, uh, rather than while people are screaming at you, that, that uh, um, and, and I, I got to say, Sabidi is so used this semester that there was not a time you guys could have had. Uh, Wes doesn't like to find bugs. You're right. <laughs> but um, you guys do a good job. Uh, I, I really like the, I like the, uh, the automated testing. I have a question. I have a question for the uh, uh, discussion forum for page view. I was wondering what is the decision process for moving the discussion forum into the full page? 
because I found out a user need to click twice. Um, from the full page, they are also being directed to the uh, non full page, which is uh, doubling the work. So I was uh, uh, wondering uh, what what benefit adds on for the full page. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so we were thinking like with the full page view, you have an easier way to like scroll through and look at all the different threads that are available and like see a bit more of the text rather than the tiny little third of the page bar that it opens to a thread which might not be the one you're looking for. So we feel like having this ability to see these threads bigger and have more like be able to read a bit more is helpful. Is there, a, is there a formal process for evaluating these uh, these improvements or do you guys, uh, you know, what, what's what's the process when you're trying to introduce new features uh, or, or come up with new uh, new visualizations? Well, we would like, so like I said, we have like bi-weekly meetings. So sometimes if we're like working on a new feature, we'll talk about it or if it's a work in progress, we can demo it and um, people can just say their suggestions. Cool. All right, any other any other questions for the submittee team? You guys have had a, a, a roller coaster ride this semester. Um, I, I can't imagine, I think we have like double the numbers. It almost looks like double the number of, of projects actually using you. Do you have any idea of, of that? It seems like there's a lot more projects using you and you're doing a lot more. So uh, good job. Yeah, we have like um, so many hackathons that their hosts and sometimes it's like we have 60 PRs left to merge. <laughs> it gets to be a lot. Well, I couldn't write a notebook in Submitty until this semester and now I'm using them. Uh, well, every Arcos for attendance and uh, and for about half the tests on, uh, on CS1. So uh, keep rolling out interesting and useful features. All right, um, I think the last one we have today is SMAB. Um, so these are the slides if you want to pull it up. You want me to pull them up? Okay, Yeah. I will do that. And you guys can stop looking at me and start looking at some slides. This should be in here, I think. And now if we go oh, full screen is what I want. Is that right. right, guys? Yep, that looks good. Uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and get started then. Um, so we're SMAB. Uh, I'm Sean Miller. I was the team lead and focused on a lot of different things during the project, uh, getting the GitHub built. We are a new project, um, so that's kind of my main focus, just getting everything up and running. Was that a beep? If Jeremy, no, if Jeremy and... Uh, you uh, I'm, I'm John. Um, I was in charge of the front end and as well as uh, storing everything we, or how we stored everything we scraped off of the internet. And I'm Jeremy and I was given the parser. All right, that's a beep now. <laughs> Go to the next slide. Uh, so a quick project overview. overview. So we're SMAB, uh, it's a seed market analysis bot. Um, it's all written in Python, uh, and this program takes in a CSGO case um, and a, the user wants to look up, and then we get some information based on that case. Uh, you can kind of see what we're pulling up in the bottom left. Um, so this is a, basically, it's the website that we're pulling off, and we have like a gun name, uh, the skin, and then its quality, and then the price. And so we're pulling all that information into Python. Um, so we're collecting all that data, and then we're piping that data out to a CSV, and then doing a little bit of data analysis on that to determine the actual value of these cases. Uh, and just in case you don't know, a CSGO case is basically like a slot machine. Uh, in the top right, you can see there's a bunch of different things you can get. You get one item. It costs $2.79 to open. 
um, and you get one item with, you know, variable prices, um, in the end, most definitely is a scam. So, yeah. <laughs> um, can we go to the next slide? So yeah, our goals for the semester, as I said earlier, we are a new project. So we are really just trying to get a minimum viable product up and running to just be able to look at some data and do a little bit of analysis on it. Um, so we did, we got the, we wanted to get the UI up and running uh, just so it's easy to use, um, get it as much functionality as possible. We wanted to collect all that necessary data, which we did through parsing. Uh, there was a couple different ways to do it. We decided to just web scrape the page and then pull all that data in. And then we wanted to determine what we needed for data modeling. Um, we are working in one specific point of time um, versus a range of time. So we're just a user clicks and at that point in time, we're looking at what the case is worth. Um, and then we wanted to create a GitHub with plenty of issues. Um, so we know what work to be done. And uh, we did end up living all, everyone on the team lived together. So that was kind of how we interacted. And we did, we talked a lot about the project, um, but we also did have an issue tracker um, to determine what people were up to. Uh, so if we can go to the next. All right, so what did we get done? Uh, as I kind of mentioned, we got the UI up and running. Uh, our data collection is complete. It works pretty well. Uh, we still have some improvements to be made on that. Uh, all our data is piped to the CSV, and we did some basic analysis done. Basically, we uh, got an expected value to so determine if something, you have an 80% chance to get a $1 skin. Um, and so you'll multiply that $1 by 0.8, and then you add all of the possible combinations to get your actual expected value in this case. Um, and then our GitHub, as I mentioned, was set up with issues. Uh, we also used branches, um, and our master was protected, so all the PRs had to go through me um, to make sure we didn't get anything bad onto master. Um, and so, yeah, future goals is to create a more clean uh, UI, probably within a web page, more than likely. Not really sure how we want to do that. Um, integrate data analysis over time. Um, so this would probably where the bot part comes in. Um, so the bot would every you know 24 hours or however long you wanted to make it. Um, it would pull in data and then do analysis over time versus just one point in time. And then we have to determine value of extremely rare items, uh, i.e. knives. They're about a one in 400 and they vary in price pretty extremely. So it's pretty hard to actually measure that. Um, yeah. And then, so we, uh, and then clean up our data collection and make our program more efficient in general. Uh, and so we can go into more specifics of what uh, Jeremy and John did. So we originally started off with an individual web page and parsed through the HTML of that web page. To do that, we converted it into a JSON. And in order to do that, we needed to find simple hooks inside of the data that we could use to understand what we're looking at and for information. I think that's a deep. Right, so we had to transform data into usable input strings. So once we found our individual data, we stripped it down and structured it. With useless characters being removed, it was very, we were very lucky with a few of these. There were bars, which allowed us to differentiate between the individual kind of weapon and the paint job given to the weapon. Um, there's a few upgraded versions of the weapon that you may find that are accounted for in individual edge cases. And what happens with this data is that we gather it into a list of weapons in this order, weapon, paint, condition, buy price, and sell price, once we've gotten rid of all of the unnecessary data. Uh, that's a B. So we then structure the data to be output in a list of classes. Uh, John put together usable classes that we could use to uh, store the data and perform absolute value calculations on, which we'll get further into into the uh, future. But because the data is structured in list, oh no, sorry, that was not a beat, my bad. Um, it's, so because the data becomes structured and is put into um, a class weapon, it can now be returned as a list of classes, which um, are far more easily, far more, what's the term? It's much easier to calculate with the list of classes. All right, that's a beat. And so uh, I broke these classes, as uh, Jeremy said, we had the, the weapon and everything, like what it is, the uh, paint job or skin on the gun, the condition it's in, and as well as a uh, list of prices that it sells at based on its condition and list of prices you can buy it at based on its condition. And then based off all of those, um, there's a function in the class that would estimate the value of the weapon at that current point in time when we uh, selected it. And as well as that, uh, there's a case class, which each case has a set list of weapons in it. 
And so we had in the case class, it just stores a list of the weapons and then uh, an estimated value of the entire case based off the value of every weapon in the case. <clears throat> and that's the next slide. And so I was also, I also made the user interface or the UI, which was very bare bones for this semester. But it, uh, you can see here, we have a list of some of the cases possible. There's a lot more, but uh, we're slowly adding the buttons and it just, it's a bit of code to get each of those in there and it's very tedious. And so we it also can uh, pop up an Excel file that will hold the CSV we generate for the user. And so when you click on one thing, it'll pop up an X, after a bit, it'll pop up an Excel file that shows all the data on the case and a little bit of math done with that. And we, I did this all in TK enter or TK enter, whatever you call it. Um, it was not probably ideal. And as we said earlier, we're in the future, probably gonna change the UI to something else. But for now, this is what it is and it works enough, I guess. Um, and that's a beat. So thanks everyone for coming. It's a relatively short presentation, um, but I don't know if anyone had any questions. If you have further questions about Star, email me as well. Do you have any questions for the SMOB team? All right, so it always comes down. You guys can't get off scot-free, so I'll at least ask a couple of questions. Um, one of the things I'm interested in is we get, you know, so we had a, a project a few semesters ago doing a similar, you know, evaluate boxes. They were doing box splitting, though. They were, they were getting boxes with multiple things and then allowing a resell of the contents or, uh, you know, coordinated um, uh, purchasing. But it, seemed, it seems like uh, there's, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of interest in this type of thing. And one of the things I'm wondering about is can you, now that you have kind of a minimum viable product, can you see a way to make this, if you, if you were going to make this a generic um, product that would work on many different things. You know, I know Steam has all sorts of games. Um, is there a path from where you are now uh, working on CSGO to, uh, to a, uh, a more generic product that could work on multiple types of game implementations? And what kind of would it, what would it take to, to get there? Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a pretty interesting question. Um, so I think the our obviously our focus is on CSGO, but expanding it wouldn't be you'd probably have to do three things, I would assume. Um one would be determining what URLs you're gonna be uh going to. Um we basically specify and you can just edit the URL and that's how we look up the cases. Um so we'd have to determine that, um, which would be relatively easy, and then probably just changing the parser. I assume it would parse slightly differently. Um, but I know there are different cases within uh the Steam market, so you could look at other things like this. Um and then possibly doing different uh, math on it. Um, but other than that, I mean, after you get the parser up and running, um, and it would it would be pretty easy to make this a generic product for most things on the Steam Marketplace. Cool. Are, are you guys looking at, uh, is this looking to continue? Or are you? Uh... So, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm hoping to write up a bunch of, <laughs> I'm hoping to write up a bunch of issues um, and get that. I know I, I probably won't be, I won't be taking Arcos next semester, but more, more than likely my senior year, so next fall, mm -hmm. um, I'll be hoping to continue this project on. Um, that would be the hope. So, so with that in mind, right, you're going to have to kind of tide over a down period. Um, are you guys, you know, other than writing up issues, do you have any kind of plans to, to, on how you're going to mothball this or how you're going to you know, put it in a state where it's easy to pick up again and, and kind of start developing again on. Yeah. I, I also, along with issues, probably want to write up some, at least some documentation on where we were at um, and what should be coming to, we were documenting slowly as we were going, probably uh, hopefully some more uh, towards the end of the semester in the coming weeks. Um, but yeah, documenting and then just determining what we want to get done. Uh, possibly writing out just a map of where we want to go with the project um, in the future semesters would more than likely be what we'll do in the coming weeks, hopefully. Cool. And that would be a good thing to get in your repository because it's, yeah. you know, once it's in the repository, then it lives with the repository. So anytime you download it, you know, you don't have to go searching through Google Drive for your for your documents. It's it's right there with, with the code. 
No. Anybody have any other questions? All right, um, we are right at six o'clock, which isn't a bad time to stop. I think that's actually pretty good for us. Pretty close to when we wanna, pretty close to on time. Um, if there are any more questions, please ask them. Otherwise we will, uh, I guess, shut this down. Frank, uh, Stephen, are you guys still here? Anybody else have any questions? Nothing else from my end. Professor Kuzman, I see you. Nothing on my end. Awesome, that was fun. Um, well, we will meet again on Friday and we will go over, I think we'll have two groups of five. Um, so, you know, if you guys are interested in any of the projects, please plan to attend then. Uh, please get your evaluations in on, on these projects today and uh, help us kind of give them a grade as we go forward. Um, so thank you. And uh, we are done. We are out of here. Six, uh, five fifty nine on the dot.